Welcome back. It's 25 years tomorrow since New Zealand became the target of a terrorist attack when the Rainbow Warrior was bombed in Auckland. For the first time, we can now reveal international spies helped catch those responsible. This from Mark Kreisel. For many, a quarter to midnight, July the 10th, 1985, is the moment New Zealand lost its innocence. We did learn that um, bad things happen uh, and that we can be part of that. angry, I tell you. I'm still in. The first terrorist attack in New Zealand, Greenpeace's flagship Rainbow Warrior, torn apart by French bombs. Photographer Fernando Pereira murdered. If they really didn't mean to kill anyone, then you, you give a telephone call. I mean, even the IRA gave telephone calls. The police quickly nabbed two of the agents. Three others had fled on the yacht Ovia and were being held by the Australian police. And we had them in our grasp, so to speak. We didn't have enough evidence. New Zealand was on its own. Our nuclear-free policy alienating our traditional allies, but former Trade Minister Mike Moore has revealed for the first time that we received crucial information from foreign spies. There are things we cannot disclose about intelligence services, how we knew, where we knew the boat was. Only two agents, Alain Mafar and Dominique Prier, were ever convicted but they returned home after serving less than two years of a 10-year sentence. A guy died. Justice was not seen to be finally done. This is where the Rainbow Warrior was blown up. 25 years later, Marsden Wharf is a car park for imported cars. Looking at it now, it's hard to believe that this was the site of an international terrorism attack. The French government eventually said sorry and paid out $13 million. Ten years later, they stopped nuclear testing. What we never achieved is that we get rid of nuclear weapons on this planet. The 25th anniversary of the bombing will be a low-key event here, but on the other side of the world, Greenpeace is about to start building their new flagship, Rainbow Warrior 3. Mark Kreisel, One News.